Thank you for tuning in to Hope TV, the television broadcast ministry of Hope Alive Freedom Church. We are real people offering real hope in a real world. At our church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts, and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. entitled, Let There Be Financial Peace on Earth. Now, here's the question. Uh, you, you know, there's so many things that are going on all over around our church right now because for the last two months, we said as Christians that Jesus said, by this, the whole world would know that you're my disciples. How is that? By your love for one another, right? So when we love our fellow humanity, the people know that there's something different about us. That's the difference between us and maybe other world religions that are really radical, right? While they're killing Christians, you know, we're saying live, everybody, right? I mean, I don't care what side, what side of the tracks you were born on or it was it east side or west side or what color the skin, your skin or your education. It doesn't matter to us. We believe that everybody should be loved. And this is how the world knows that we are Jesus' disciples. And what an extreme honor it is to be a part of a church, right, Who, who, who genuinely loves God and loves people. I mean, a church, listen to me, that not only loves in words, but in deeds, and in action, right? Not, not just a church that comes together and says, teach me about the Bible on Sunday morning, but a church that loves its community and it serves its community. And it's, it's always giving, it's life giving to the community. What an honor, right? In our sanctuary, we have what's called the blessing tree or the giving tree. And I've encouraged everybody to buy a gift, two or three gifts, whatever, and come and bring it and put it underneath that tree. That that way, if anybody has need, if you're in here today or you're watching online and you need, you need gifts for Christmas, just come to church and after church, you just go to the giving tree. It's in the foyer and just say, hey man, I... I've got two kids and, 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 and one's a boy and this is, and, and they'll, get you, they'll give you, and you go back, they got little bicycles already underneath the tree. And, but next week, somebody say next week. Next week. Right? Everybody brings those gifts. And let's let, let's let it be Christmas around here. So invite your friends or family, maybe people that are just maybe a little less fortunate, let them come to church and, and they can see the benevolence of God, right? That God provides richly to all who seek and ask, right? Amen? Right? So, so I want to encourage you along that line. I mean, and these are the sorts of things 
that to be a part of a church family that's loving the world like that, I, I, it feels great to me, I'll tell you that, right? But the question, again, can be, man, pastor, but why are we doing all of this right now? I mean, when, if people are financially strapped, it's, de- it's definitely during the holiday. You, know you know how stressed out I am during the Christmas holidays, right? I, I, I mean, why are we doing this right now? Let me tell you why. Because right now, during this holiday season, this is the time of the year where when people hurt the most, they hurt the most. So for people that things are going well and their families together and they didn't lose a, lo- they didn't lose, uh, lose a, a loved one this past year or anything like that, you know, they're with family and if they got a good job, everything's just great, right? I mean, I mean this is, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And, and people got to walk all and they turn on the radio and they're, they're singing those songs and they say, but not for me. You guys don't understand. I mean, my, 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 my family is a mess, right? And, and so where people hurt, as a matter of fact, statistically, more people will take their own life by suicide during this time of the year than any other time of the year. And so I asked myself the question, right? Well, if people are hurting and, and they hurt the most during this time of the year, well, what one area, because it's kind of hard to minister to all of the areas, what's that one area of people's lives predominantly where people hurt most? And hands down, the, pl- the place where people hurt the most is typically in their finances. Because your finances touch almost every aspect of your life, right? So in wanting to minister to that, Right? We said we're going to minister on finance. Did, did you know that the average American spends 136% of their income? Did you know that? And we see our nation, they're, they're doing it the same. As a matter of fact, just this week, I don't know if you follow this stuff, but just this week, our, our national debt has just went to $18 trillion. I mean, it was just a year ago when I was saying 17 trillion, you know, a little over a year ago, 17 trillion dollars in debt. How do you reverse that? Amazing, right? So as a nation goes, so goes a culture. And now we see people doing it personally. And this is what we learned last week. We learned what happens is freedom has produced what? Prosperity, right? And, and this is what happens. And prosperity has produced bondage. That's what happens. Where people are free, they prosper. But the downside is that when people begin to prosper, they end up going into bondage if they're not really careful. And, and, and so this series that I'm teaching right now is not a practical series about how to get out of debt this isn't a series about, you know, the how-tos or the, you know, the, 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 the practicums to, you know, financial management. As a matter of fact, we, we have already kick-started that. There's someone in our congregation that's going to be doing a, like a half a day or maybe even a one-day financial seminar to help people with the practical of how to work their finances. As a, we're going to be launching that maybe, maybe the third week. In, in, in January, and then from there, we're going we're gonna to launch a small group so like that people can be mentored and, and, and families and couples can be ministered to because they're under a lot of stress. We, we're going we're gonna to walk through. We're going to offer ministry for the practical, but, but this series is not that. This series is about what can happen right now. Why? Because I believe, watch this, and this is what we learned, I believe peace can be yours now. But see, recovery, right? That takes time. I mean, for some of us, we dug the hole so deep. I mean, we're thinking like this is a salt mine. You know what I mean? I mean, we're so deep in debt that we, you know what I mean? Well, if it took you that long to dig it, then it might take you that long to bury it and get out of that thing, right? But this series is not about the recovery aspect, 
This is about what I believe. I'm talking about the stuff that's on the inside because I believe that peace can be yours now. Why? Listen to me. Because peace doesn't have anything to do with your circumstances. Peace is something that happens internal. That's why Jesus, in the middle of a storm, when the disciples are panicking, right? I can't believe that you're sleeping at the bottom of a boat. We're about to all drown in, in, in the middle of the sea. And, and, and Jesus says, listen, I'm going to give you the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. It doesn't matter what the weather's out like outside or, or what the circumstances are out on the outside. See, peace is not something that, hap- that, that is external. Peace is something that's what? It's internal, right? So this series is about all of those adjustments that we can make on the inside of our heart so that we can grab a hold of peace right now. How do we adjust our hearts so we can grab a hold of peace right now? Do you see the picture of that, right? Now, here, now, here's the deal, right? As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm getting really excited because like, like I'm already like excited about the next teaching. Because next Sunday, I'm going to be talking about peace no matter what. Because it's Christmas, right? It's the most wonderful time of the year. And, and you say, well, well, why are we doing all this stuff? And it's, because it's Christmas, right? And, and, and Christmas is really about the celebration. I mean, if we're going to boil this down, It's about the celebration of the Prince of Peace, about his birth. Which brings us to a scripture, a text today. For the scripture says, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, right? And and, and, and of course the scripture goes on and says, and he will be called The most wonderful, okay, (laughs) wonderful counselor. So if you want your life to be wonderful, you got to go to a wonderful counselor. And he's going to be called mighty God, everlasting. He never changes the prince of peace, right? Right. Now, 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 here's what I think. I think Walt Disney World has really kind of skewed our, you know, our, our vision, our thoughts about the prince, right? I mean, there are fairy tales about the princes, right? But the word prince in Hebrew, from which we take that scripture, right, the prince of peace, that word prince, the prince of peace in Hebrew, the Hebrew word is sar, like the same word you get sergeant from, right? Sar, right? And that word sar simply means the one in charge, right? He's the Lord, he's the chief, he's the what? General. The word peace means, uh, is the word shalom, and it means rest. I, I, I can be at peace, I can be at rest in my soul, no matter what's going on around me. It means tranquility, right? Somebody said, I could use a tranquilizer right about right now, right? You know what I mean? I mean, when I start thinking about my bills, please, somebody tranquilize me, right? Well, Jesus can be that injection of tranquilization, right? Okay, wholeness, it means completeness, and watch this word, contentment, because we're going to come back and we're going we're gonna to talk about that word, contentment. Now, here's the deal. See, people want peace, but if you want peace, you can't have peace Unless you come under the lordship of the prince of peace. Prince means lord, the one who's in charge of peace. So here's the the truth. Whether or not you will ever experience peace for many of you, listen to me, will be determined by whether or not you're saved or not. Can't you say that? Right? Can't, Can't I just go there? Right? See, he is either lord of your life He's the one that's in charge over every aspect of your life. Or, you you know, I I mean, perhaps maybe, you know, he's just someone that we just talk about once a week when we come to church on Sunday. You you know what I mean? So he's either Lord all week or he's just somebody we just talk about. But, But I believe it's not until, I know, I don't have to say I believe, I know that it's not until you're under the Lordship of Jesus that you will ever know his what? Peace. You can't get his peace without coming underneath his what? 
lordship. Do, do, do you see the picture, right? So, so well, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll get, let me give you a couple of scriptures here, right? Psalms, the fifth chapter says, therefore, since we have been justified through what? Through faith, we have peace with God through our, and that's the word, Lord Jesus Christ, right? Look at this, look at this next, next scripture. Psalms uh, 4, verse 8 says, I will lie down and sleep in but why? See that word for? Do, do you see that word for? That means because. The reason why I lie down and sleep in peace is because you alone, right? Who is this? Lord, right? Someone who's in charge, make me dwell in safety. Let me give you another passage of scripture, right? Psalms 29 verse 11 says, the Lord gives strength. Man, I can't endure this anymore. Man, I feel like I'm cracking under the pressure, right? But the scripture says, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord, who? The Lord blesses his people with what? Peace. Let me give you one more passage of scripture, right? So, uh, Isaiah 48 verse 22 says, there is no peace, says the Lord, for the what? It's just, it's hard to know real peace when you're not under the lordship of Christ. Do you see the picture, right? Now, what I hope to do today is, you know, if there's a prince, right, meaning he's in charge, he's, there's a prince of a kingdom, then a prince, listen to me, has principles that govern his kingdom. Do you, see, you understand, right? The prince makes the rules, that governs his kingdom. So, so uh, today, I want to give you some of the principles that have been set forth by the Prince of Peace that would allow you to live in peace. Here's some of the principles that would govern his, 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 his kingdom, right? Why is that? Now, now, because principles, watch this, principles are the ways of the Lord. When I say the, the ways of the Lord, I'm, talk, I'm talking about what's God's, what are, what are God's rules? I mean, I mean, how does he act? How does he behave? So I'm going to give you some principles today. So the question becomes, really for you, if you want, print, if you want peace, you've got to follow the principles of the Prince of Peace. The question becomes for you, how closely, hear me out, if I look at me, how closely are you following the principles of the Lord when it comes to your finances. I mean, you, you, are, are you following me here? See, here, the bottom line is, the further away that you stray from the ways of the Lord, the more difficult it becomes for you to find peace. I'm, I'm talking, the, the Lord is really speaking to folk today. You can't dodge this. This is every bit a part of the principles of God that govern the spiritual realm as, as, as govern eternal life. You can't, you know what I mean? You can't separate these principles. They're all, they're all principles, right? Now, now, so I'm gonna give you a couple of principles. And, and why is that? Because truth be told, when it comes to money, there are some principles, not just good ideas, that bring peace to your finances, right? Why? Because I believe, watch this, I believe stress comes from ignoring God's principles. When people are, you can't have the tranquility of God in your life, regardless of the circumstances, if you're not, if you're ignoring God's principles. Does that make sense? So I want to give you uh, five principles today of, 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 of the, God's financial kingdom right? Five principles, and I want you to hear me out. Listen to me. These five principles, they're a package deal, right? You can't pick and choose. So, so, so what I'm trying to say, what I mean by that is, you know, you can, you can violate just one of these principles and lose peace. It's a package deal, right? These, this is all inclusive because you can say, well, I'm doing four out of the five, so I should have like, you know, four out of five percent peace, but it don't work that way, right? I, like I'm almost there. It doesn't work that way, right? You violate one of these five, and then, it, it, you know, 
you compromise that peace. What are those principles? Let, let me hit those uh, this morning. The first principle set forth by the principle, uh, the Prince of Peace is the principle of obedience. All right? Let me explain this, right? Now, now, in other words, when I say obedience, in my mind, I say, when, Lord, I'm going to allow you how to tell, tell me how to manage my life. You're going to tell me how to live. And it, that includes my money, right? Let, let, let me give you an example about losing peace when you don't, don't obey, right? So, how many of you guys are those folk like, when you see in your rearview mirror, there's a cop behind you, you get nervous. Yeah, probably most of you. Do you know why? Because most of you speed. <laughs> right? <laughs> most of you ran that stoplight when it was yellow and you hit the gas. You, you know what I mean. You didn't use your turn signal. Right? I, I mean, most of us, we, we, we break. Fight. How many guys know when you're speeding, right, and you know you're speeding, you're just tense. Am I right about that? Yeah. And, and, and listen, Mr. Billy, uh, uh, you know, one of, one, of, one, of the, one of the leaders in our, in our congregation, a couple of years ago, he came to me and he gave me a Christmas gift, right? And it was a radar detector. And he said, Pastor, I just want to give you the gift that just keeps on giving, right? <laughs> and I used the heck out of that thing. God help me. But I can tell, I'm, I'm still just as nervous because that, that, that radar detector, is, it's false peace. Right? And, and I could be like pushing it a little bit, and, but I'm still like looking and I'm looking over my shoulder because it's, when, you, when, you, when you're not obeying the principles, you forfeit the peace, right? You, you know, I, I, I remember uh, uh, when, when, when I lied to my mama, how nervous I'd become. You know what? Because my mama would, I learned this from my mama when I was young. If I just ran to my mama and told her what I did wrong, she would scold me a little bit and say, now, now, don't do that no more. But if my mama found out that I did something, right, if, I, if she asked me and I lied to her about that, she started biting her lip. <laughs> and so, so, but, but if I confessed, then I'd still get, you know, punished, but it would just be a little bit less, right? But, but my point is, you know, when I'd lie to my mama, I get nervous, because why? I know that I'm disobeying. Does that make sense, right? I'm, I'm lying, I'm, I'm cheating, you know, my mom. And, 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 and listen, some of you, right, right now, you feel this way about a relationship you're in. And there's no peace, because the air is not clean. You know what I mean? I mean, you're, you're lying about something, right? So, 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 so watch this, as a parent, my wife and I, we have like five kids, right? And uh, woohoo! Uh, after this year, I have a junior in high school left. Woo! Party! <laughs> I got dizzy on that one. I should, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just a little excited. Actually, I, it's the way I cope with the empty nest syndrome. But, 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 but when my kids grew up, I'd test them all the time. Right? One of the ways I test my kids as to whether or not they would listen to me would be like, okay, listen, so you're going to be back 10 o'clock. Now, if they came back before 10 o'clock, right, guess what happened? Well, maybe next time I'd say 1030. But if they came back at 1030, when I said 10 o'clock, what happens? Right? Well, well, well listen, next time they ain't happening. Why? Because, because I was testing you, right? And see, God does the same thing with his children. He tests us. As a matter of fact, watch this. In Malachi chapter 3, God tests us with obedience to finances. And, 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 and God writes this and, and tells us, he says, Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees, in other words, my principles, right? In other words, these are patterns of, of normal behavior for believers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right, right. My decrees, like these are my principles. Like no, if you're my son, this is how my children behave. This is just, this is natural for them, 
They just naturally behave. It's a, it's a principle. It's not a law. It's a what? It's a principle. It's a value that we, that, that we have, right? And, 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 and the Lord says, you have not kept them. In, in, in other words, you know, I told you to be back by 10, but you came back at 1045, right? You didn't listen, right? You, 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 you went off, and then the Lord goes, goes on and says, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me, but you ask, how have we robbed you? In tithe and in offerings. And the Lord goes on and says, and you are under a curse. In tithe and offerings. Now, a tithe is a tenth percent of all of your income. Whatever comes in, one-tenth of your income goes back to the Lord, right? I, I, and he says, and you have robbed me in tithes and offering. And, and, and watch this, go on. And you're under a curse, watch this, the whole nation of you. The whole nation is under a curse. Why? Because you're robbing me. Did you know in the United States, only 4% of professing Christians, people that say, I'm a Christian, only 4% of professing Christians tithe? And you know, it just makes me, makes me wonder as a, as a spiritual leader, is that the reason why our nation is in such dire straits right now? Is that why we're $18 trillion in debt? I mean, is that why, I mean, young people are so messed up. We take the Ten Commandments out of the schools and, and I mean, young people are messed up and, you know, kids are having kids and kids are growing up without dads and there's dysfunctional families all over and people don't know what it means. What, I mean, what's a family? And, 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 and we're just... We're a mess, and I mean, when, at a time when our nation should be really rejoicing and, 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 and there should be recon, racial reconciliation. No, really? I mean, we're, we're tearing a part of the seams and, and all over the nation. And, and, and listen, church, we're, we're God's answer to a healing nation, uh, to a hurting nation. We're that ointment, right? I mean, look around you. Looks like heaven in here. But, but the whole nation of you, you're robbing me. And now you're under a curse. And I just can't help but think, well, if only 4% of Christians are tithing. Now, this ain't the U.S. I'm not talking about the U.S. population. But 4%, only 4%, is that the reason why? Let, let me go on. I, I started uh, talking a little bit. Bring the whole tithe. Don't smudge on this thing, right? Don't, after you've met all of your expenses, Right? You know what I mean? Don't smudge anything. Bring the whole tide into the storehouse. The, the, the storehouse is where you come together and worship with the rest of the believers every week You're with your church family. Bring your tithes and your offerings to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. In other words, when the rest of the world is in chaos, right, you'll be, you'll be feeding the world. You'll be having the answers in that, right? Now watch this. Let me go on. Now, and here's the test, right? Look, look what the Lord says. Test me in this. The same way I test my kids, are you going to be back at 10 o'clock? And, 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 and if you obey me, if you're faithful and listen to me, then I give you a little more, right? The same way that we as parents would test our children, God tests us. And he says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not, I love this word, throw open. You see that? I'll throw open the floodgates of heaven, go on, and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. Isn't that stinking awesome? Isn't that just thinking absolutely incredible? And listen, and then he goes on, he says, right, and I will prevent the pests, all those things that pester you, you know what I mean? Right? The pests from devouring your crops and the, the vines of your field will, will not cast their fruit, says the Lord 
Almighty. Isn't that awesome? Why? Why is that? Let me tell you. And then all the nations, the scripture says, and then all of the nations go on, and all the nations will call you blessed, and for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. I'm, do, I'm done reading that scripture today. I, I, I can keep on going. Well, see, obedience is a principle of peace. It's hard to walk in peace when we have not, when we're not walking in obedience. Oh, and, and, and listen, oh, by the way, hear me out, by the way, tithing is not just an Old Testament principle. It's a New Testament principle. And I know there's some religious people that always, because listen, who doesn't want to, you, you know what I mean? I, I, I mean, people that aren't like, regenerated in every aspect of their thought life with God, they, they, they prefer to hoard their money. And so they, you know, we always try to wiggle our way out of that thing, right? But so there are some religious spirits that will say, hey, look, no, that's an Old Testament thing. It's not a new, no, no, it's a New Testament thing. As a matter of fact, Jesus said this in Matthew 23. Now, Jesus said this, and he was, re, he was rebuking um, the, the, uh, the Pharisees, the religious part of that day. Matthew chapter 23, look, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, for you are careful, right? The, the sorrow that awaits you because of your religious spirit, right? You, you, uh, you Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest part of your herb gardens, right? Like, like, like your cayenne pepper that you grow, right? And you dry it out. Are you, you're going to tithe that, but he said, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, such as justice and mercy and faith. Now, listen to what Jesus said, and this is in the New Living Translation. He said this. He said, you should tithe, yes. Should you tithe? No, no, no. Jesus said, should you tithe? Should you tithe? This is not. It's not just a, an Old Testament principle. It's a faith principle. It's a New Testament principle. Testament principle. And, and let me tell you where, because you know, you start talking about this stuff, and then no matter where you go, the room can get real tense real fast. It does. And I know that. Let me tell you, I know, because I experience it right now. I'm, I'm the guy bearing the news, right? <laughs> but can I tell you where the tension comes from? The tension comes from people not trusting the messenger. You think that, you know, if, if you feel tension right now, you're thinking, my motives are wrong. Well, let me help you out. My motives are pure, right? I'm telling you this because really my, vote, my, vote, my, my motivation is truly you. I want you to live in God's blessing. I want you to live. Peace can be yours. It can be yours right now. And listen, let me give you right now, and, and, and the board of directors may not, you, you know, agree with this, but I, I, I'm going to go out there. On a limb. I, how about this? Look at me. I will give, I'm going to make a 100% guarantee if you tithe. 100% guarantee. I say tithe for a year. And if your life does not get better, come back and see me and we will refund your tithe 100%. How about that? How about that? What do you think? I might have to pay you back in increments, but I'll give it back to you. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So the principle of peace, number one, is what? Principle of peace, number one, is obedience. Say it with me. And listen, for those of you that are nervous about time, believe me, at the end, I just kind of, I just, I go fast. Right? Here's the second principle of peace. The second principle of peace is contentment. Contentment. When I say contentment, I'm talking about losing that sense of entitlement that really solves it, sort of causes, uh, you know, that drive within us that says, I want more and I want it now. And so I, you know, I, I go into debt because I want more and I want it what? I want it now. Because con but, but contentment means I'm satisfied. Did you know the Bible says uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, that uh, godliness with contentment is great gain. In other words, it's, it's advantageous for us to learn to live content. Listen, my, my wife is probably the most content person I know. She is. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I, we were driving home last night, and, and uh, you, you know, really, we only had, we had a lot, because we had so many kids, we have 
lot of vehicles than different schools and stuff. And, and, uh, and, and we had took two of our vehicles. I had one vehicle that was, the transmission was, it was gone out on it and what do we do and whatnot. And so we took two vehicles, we traded in for one big truck so I could pull campers and stuff. And, and so my wife really was, has been without a vehicle. She was out without a vehicle for over a year. And, uh, and we just shared one vehicle, and I loved it because that meant wherever I go, she had to come. You know what I mean? I, I like that. I like that a lot. And, 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 of course, it put her under stress because sometimes, I don't know why, she just didn't want to be where I was. I, I don't get that. But, uh, but, you know, my daughter got married, and, and, and uh, probably about six months later or whatever, you know, my, my son-in-law said, no, uh, uh, here, Pastor Shannon, you need a car, and then gave my daughter's car, the car that we gave to my daughter, he and my daughter come back and give it to my mom, you know, their, their mom, uh, you know, her mom. And I'm thinking, man, even my son in law is feeling sorry for, for me right now, you know. But, but listen, we were driving home last night from the encounter, and I watched my wife. She was, it's a manual, it's a little Chevy Avio, you know. And she's grinding. She was, she was just, I couldn't keep up with her. And she was just as happy as can be. She's just one of the most content per people I ever met in my life. Did, did you know that the Bible says in 2 Timothy that, that complaining is a sign that the end is near? It's a sign of the end times. Did you know that? Right? And I can promise you this, because we talk about the end of the age, but when you start murmuring and complaining about your marriage, it's a sign that your marriage is about over if you don't change something. Am I making sense, Right? So, so for us, contentment is important. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, that, Mo, listen, it was real faith that caused Moses to turn away from all the prosperity of Egypt. And I know that there's popular prosperity teachings that we've all heard if you're in full gospel stu- you know, circles. That say, of course, God wants you to prosper. And, and, you know, and God takes pleasure in prospering his people. I've preached that because it's true, right? But sometimes that thing can get skewed as well. And, and we just think it's sort of an entitlement. I'm a Christian, so I should be rich. You are rich. The average American, if you make $50,000, right, it, 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 right now, you're in your household, you're living like kings lived just three, hundred, three centuries ago. You're eating like they ate just three centuries ago. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching. We are rich. But, but so, you know, sometimes skewed prosperity teaching can, can mess up our mind. We say faith means I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to have more money in my bank account. No, well, let me tell you what faith did. Faith caused Moses to turn away from all of the riches of an entire nation of Egypt. That is faith. Faith is, you know, peace is something that's internal, right? Faith is something that's internal. You see, temptation, the temptation that we fight, financial, is we always want more. Right? I want more. I have to have more, and I have to have it now. And, you know, uh, Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, tell all those rich people. And, by the way, right, if, if you make more than 30000 here, then you're, you're in the upper echelons of the world. I'm just letting you know, right? But tell all of those who are rich, don't trust in the uncertainties of their riches. But tell them to trust in me, Right? Do you know God rained manna down in the desert when, 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 uh, for the Exodus? And that movie's coming out. I'm excited about that, right? How many guys are excited? I am. I can't wait to go see it. And, and, and so, so God feeds an entire people by, by raining down this manna, this, you know, this, I, I guess it was uh, Hebrew flour, wheat, you know what I mean, from heaven, dropped it. And every day, the Hebrews had to go and they had to gather it up. And, and, and they would gather it. it. It only lasted for a day. Because if they tried to store up more than a day, it would go bad, right? And you said, well, well, God, why didn't you just rain down, you know, enough manna a week at a time, right? Because it would make me feel better, right? I'd have a whole week supply. It would stay good for a week. Well, God said, no, I don't, want, I don't want it to be that way. Because I want you to trust me every day. I don't want you to trust in the blessing. I want you to trust the blesser. Huh? Right? As the contentment comes, 
when we start trusting the blesser. And contentment is, is found in not having more. It's being, it, contentment comes in being satisfied with what we have. Watch this scripture in Philippians chapter 4. Uh, uh, Paul said, I know what it is to be in need. And I, and I know what it is to have plenty. But I've learned the secret of being content, right? Content in any, in any, and in every situation. I've learned this secret. Let me give you another passage of scripture. Here's contentment right here, right? Uh, whether uh, uh, whether we- well-fed or hungry or, or living in plenty or in want, Another scripture, please. Thank you. All right. Watch this. Proverbs. Why? Here's contentment. Lord, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily what? Bread. Give me what I need today. Now, see, for some of you, you have a gift of giving. And we need big bread. Like, I would have loved to give about $10,000 away in Christmas gifts to everybody that showed up next Sunday. Right? Blessing God's people. And so for you, you might be saying, hey, that's me. God, I want to do that right? But it's not for you. It's not so you can have a bigger house or a nicer car and people would think more highly about you, but, but so that you can increase the kingdom. Watch this. Give me neither poverty or riches, but give me only my what? Daily bread. Otherwise, I might have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? So you forget the blesser because you're more concerned with the blessing. Or I may become poor and now I steal and I, I dishonor the name of my God. Do you see that? Do you see the picture right there? Right? So a couple of principles of peace, and we're going to go a little bit faster here. A couple of principles of peace. Principle number one is obedience. Say it with me. Obedience. Principle number two is contentment. Say, say it with me. Obedience. Contentment. Let me give you t- t- principle number three. Is, it is generosity. Generosity. Now, listen, I've been cur- encouraging us to be generous for the last four weeks or so, Right? And, and, and let me tell you my hidden motive. I've been saying that not just for the sake of those who are receiving the blessing of your generosity throughout the city, your family, wherever you're being generous. I'm, my motive is not just for their sake, but it's for your sake. And you say, well, well why is that? Well, can, can I tell you why? Because the happiest people you'll ever meet are the most generous people you ever meet. Don't lie. Think about it right now. Who are the happiest people you know? They're the most generous people you know. Did you know, uh, uh, medically, people who are generous have less physical problems? Did you know that? Statistically founded data. Now, why is that? Because God desires us to be well. So generosity is a principle of peace. As a matter of fact, 2 Corinthians says this, right? But just as you have excelled in everything, and some of you guys, you have. I mean, you serve the Lord and you're generous with your time. And I, I mean, and, oh, some of you guys are like the most forgiving people I'll ever meet in my life. So gracious and kind and you've excelled in all sorts of areas of your life. Hear the word of the Lord. God says, just as you excel in everything else, right, in faith and in speech and in knowledge and in complete earnest and in love, for us, listen, see that you also excel in this grace of what? Given. It's a principle of peace. Let me give you another passage of scripture, right? This is so awesome. Watch, watch this, right? Uh, the promise of God, this is the pow- power of God. Watch this. Psalms 112 says, good will come to him who is what? Generous. Say it with me. Good will come to him who is? Generous. Come on, say it one more time. Good. Who is what? Generous. No, who is arguing as to whether or not they can afford to tithe. Those that are arguing whether or not the tithe is really a biblical mandate for Christians. Those who are saying, man, I, but, but I don't have enough. No, no, listen, listen, listen. I can't give, I already give my tithe. I don't give more than my tithe. Well, don't shout me down, I'm preaching good on Sunday morning. Right, okay, all right. Good will come to him who is what? And lends freely to the Lord, right? Watch this, principle, promise, of, well, watch this. Uh, Proverbs eleven twenty five. a generous man right, will what? 
But he who, and he who refreshes others will himself be. Isn't that beautiful? Think about that. Some of you guys, man, you own a lot. You got investment properties. I, I, I mean, you got, you, you, you got stuff in investments away and you just, you keep spending all of that interest on yourself and trying to secure your, and honestly, that we're going to talk about the practicalities of managing your finances in January. These are principles of peace. And it's hard to be at peace when you're not listening to the principles of the Prince of Peace who say, hey, here's the rules. This is normal behavior for my, for my people, those that call me their, their prince, right? So, what, so, so what, what are those principles? They're the principles of obedience, the principles of, of contentment, the, the principle of generosity. Number four, watch this. Number four, the principle of integrity. It's being honest, right? It's being honest. Now, now you may not know it. Watch this. Some people think that God's only watching them when they sin, when they, they're sinning sexually or in other areas of their life. But when it comes to their finances, you know what I mean? That's a different story, right? But see, I want you to know today that, 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 that God is watching every part of your life, even financially. As a matter of fact, the scripture tells us in Mark chapter 12. Do you have this scripture up there? Thank you. All right. In Mark chapter 12, when, when all of the people were worshiping God in the temple and the, the time had come that they were given their offering, Jesus was watching everybody give the offering. What, what, Jesus sat down opposite of the place where the offerings were being put. And what did, what did he do? He watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. And that's it. You don't have to go any further. Jesus, is, he was watching that. And then the scripture goes on and he says, because I'm going to paraphrase this thing, and, 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 you know, some rich people, they came and, and boy, they dropped their money in there, a bag of money, boom. And, and you know, he, he, he didn't turn his head. He, didn't, he wasn't impressed. But there was a lady that had two pennies. It, it, it's refer, referred to as the widow's mite. She dropped two little pennies in that offering. Ding. And all of a sudden, his heart was, was stirred on the inside. And he looks at his disciples and he said, you see, now that's the sound that God the Father in heaven likes to hear. Because these other guys, see, they gave out of their abundance. But this woman, she gave out of her lack. She gave out of the integrity of her heart. The others, they were given because they thought it was the right thing to do. They wanted others to see them give. But this woman right here, she gave all that she had. Now, now, listen, here's the point. Here's the principle. Watch this. It's not, watch this. It's not the size. It's not the size of the gift. It's the what? Depth of integrity. That's what Jesus is watching here. And every, whatever you give, whatever your tithe is, whatever you're offering, whatever you get, it's not the size of that. Because people say, well, man, that's got to be somebody else to give to that translation of the Bible. You know, somebody, I mean, I've, I've just got $10. Well, if four of, 400 of you give $10, that's $4,000. It's not the size. Well, that's for somebody else. No, 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 it's for all of us. Because Jesus is watching the principle here, the principle of integrity. God is watching, and he's not watching the size of the gift. It's, he's watching the depth of our, our integrity. Does that make sense? Watch this, because God, God's serious about this. So, 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 so watch this. L listen. The Lord detests differing weights and dishonest scales do not play, please him. Don't cheat him. Don't rob him. Watch this scripture, right? Watch this. And, and, and scripture says in 2 Corinthians, for we are taking pains. Sometimes it hurts to do right. Now, let me give you a definition of integrity. A, in, a definition of integrity is found in Proverbs. In te, an integrous man is the man who swears to his own hurt. In other words, men, I, I'm gonna do, even though it hurts me, I'm still going to follow through with what I'm supposed to do, right? We are taking pains. That's the integrity. It hurts, right? To do what is what? Right. Look at me. Who, under the sound of my breath right now, can argue that giving a tithe of what you have is wrong. Who could argue that? Stop.
Stop right now. So stop thinking about, but how I'm going to pay the bills. How I'm going to, just stop. You got it. All right, watch this. Boom, presto, I've just given you 10% extra. I've given you, boom, 10% for you to tie. Who is going to argue right here today that giving, honoring God with just a tithe, giving God an offering, and an offering is above your tithe, it's not right. It's, it, it, that's just not right. It's not right to do that. Who can argue that? Nobody. Nobody can. Because we know that it's the right, it's, it's the right thing to do. There's no, there's no blood-bought child of God that claims to be born again today that can deny the truth of what we just said. Even though it hurts, right? For we do what is what? Right. And not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. I want you to know, this is how I live my life. Let me tell you a story, and, I, I, and I'm going to wrap this up. I really do. Let me tell you a story. When I, became a, when I became a Christian, I was born again. Now, the tithe, that was tough, man. It was really tough. And, and, and listen, at first, I just started writing tithe checks by faith because that was the prosperity teaching that I was under. And then I'd bounce checks, and then I was embarrassed to go to church because I know that the church that received that NFF, NSF, non-sufficient funds, right? I was embarrassed. And now they had to pay the $20 surcharge, and I had to pay more. I was just embarrassed. And so, so I reasoned, I studied, I started the word, I said, well, that's just an Old Testament thing. I'm not under the law. I'm free. And that's how I lived. And then it, there was no peace in my heart. And then one day, it just occurred to me, you know, is, are you really trusting God with your finances? I mean, we're living paycheck to paycheck and all that stuff. And one day I said, no, I'm done. Because listen to me, the, the collection agencies were already calling me. They were pounding me, right? And I said, I'm done. And so I began to tithe. I went to my pastor and I told him what I was doing. And man, he just blessed me. Of course he did, right? And I, I just continued to tithe. And, and then, I, I, you know, I went to a consumer credit ca- credit counselors and try to work with my credit creditors and try to negotiate a deal like how we could do that and, and then my counselor started telling me okay see that 10 percent that you're giving to to the church you you can't do that anymore and i said that's non-negotiable that doesn't belong to me it definitely doesn't belong to you to make any decision you got 90 percent to work with let's go to work can i tell you something today i'm blessed the peace of god is all over my life right my family is serving Jesus. The idea is I'm, de- I'm trusting God to meet all of my needs, to supply all of my needs according to his riches and his glory in Christ. I'm not dependent upon what can I go make or you know, how much uh, how am I gonna man- manage the finances, what kind, of, what kind of business deals I'm gonna negotiate. I am trusting God every day to meet my needs. Why? Because he's able, amen? How many guys appreciate this message today, today, this morning? Amen. Let me pray for you. Every head bowed, every client closed. Let me just pray for you right now. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, Lord God, let there be financial peace. And knowing, Lord God, that you said to us today that there is no peace for the wicked, Father, I'm asking today, let peace come. For those whose hearts have been turned They see that they've violated just some principles of peace, principles that govern your financial kingdom. Father, I'm asking you today, in the name of Jesus, that you forgive us. God, that you would just strengthen our hearts, that we might immediately begin to apply these principles. God, let peace be our immediate reward right now as we embrace these principles and say, in Jesus' name, I'm gonna live by these. Let peace come. And Father, for those today whose lives have sin has just wreaked havoc, I mean, because the consequences of sin have just violated their life in every way because they've refused to submit all those moral areas of their life under your lordship father i'm asking you today today as they extend their hearts and say well it's christmas i see that you're the prince of peace jesus 
I've been living just wretched. I'm off. And Father, today, as, as their hearts begin to turn toward the cross of Calvary and say, Jesus, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I'm asking, let salvation be their immediate reward. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding right now immediately capture their heart, guard their mind. Lord, let that song be, be sung in their heart, in their soul. It is well. It is well in my soul. Father, I pray right now that you would wash away, Lord God, the stains of sin, of guilt and shame and all that stuff that accompanies that. Father, as hearts are turned toward you, as they say, Jesus, I don't want you just to be my Savior. But today, I make you the Lord of my life. And all God's people would agree with that said, amen and amen and amen. 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 Hey, listen, listen, listen. I see today there's some people that are wiping tears from their eyes. And I just think it's stinking awesome. Because the Bible says you'll know the truth. It's the truth will set you free. And if you're here today and you're someone that your heart has made a decision, God, I'm not, look, I want peace. And I'm just tired of living. Wicked means twisted, right? I'm opposing your will for my life. And if you pray that prayer of surrender, making Jesus the Lord of your life today, I want to encourage you today. Let us know about it. Make that decision of faith a public thing. If that's you, before you leave, remember that little Connect and Grow card I told you about a little bit earlier that's in the back seat of that pocket? I asked you to fill it out sometime during the service. Would you just take a moment right now, maybe while the ushers uh, or passing out the offering, and when they do, would you just take a moment and fill out the appropriate decision that you've made today? Maybe you've recommitted your life to Christ, you've just strayed from the Lord, or maybe this is the first time that you said, no, hey, man, I didn't know what being saved was all about. I just want to be in a personal relationship with Jesus, or maybe you want to get baptized, whatever it is. Would you just mark that off, and when the ushers pass the offering in front of you, just take that and drop that in the bucket. Let me tell you what's going to happen. My wife and I, we pray over every one of those cards. And not only that, somebody, if, should you choose, somebody will give you a call. And they'll get you connected, right? Because we want to be able to partner with you so you don't have to work, walk out this journey of faith by yourself. Does that make sense? For those of you today that are watching by television, you can do the same thing. All you got to do is go to our, our, our website, hopealive.com. On the homepage, scroll all the way to the bottom. There's an icon that says decision. Click decision, and from there, just make your way through and let us know that you pray with us. Amen? Amen? Pastor Bobby would love to have the opportunity to pray for you and your family. If you would like more information about the ministries of Hope Alive Freedom Church, check out our website at www.hopealive.com. And thanks again for tuning in.